Uh, hey everyone, Mike McCain here, uh, and I'm going to be talking a little bit more about this digital plain air painting that I did for the magazine. Uh, let's see, so I like to start with a red uh, under uh, base, basically. Uh, I think it, it lets a little bit of that red color bleed through and kind of unify a piece. Sometimes I'll, I'll go back at the end and reinforce that. Um, you know, here I'm, I'm really just blocking in uh, basic shapes and... Uh, haven't really put much effort into making this pretty yet. Uh, sometimes it's more or less, but right now, especially because I'm outside on site, uh, I'm just trying to get the main areas of this composition in uh, and try to um, do some decent color picking. I'm a little bit off in places, but I'll fix it as I go along. Uh, that is one of the uh, big blessings of the digital work. Um, Let's see, so here, uh, really just starting to try to add a little bit more clarity and detail to the scene. Um, I'm, I've experimented with a few different ways to render some of this foliage, uh, which can be pretty daunting when you, when you take in just sort of the, the complexity that you're looking at. Uh, but, um, you know, when I'm feeling a little bit overwhelmed like that, I, I try to just come back to... Uh, While well, these things are simple cylinders or cubes, uh, spheres, uh, pretty much any object that you're observing can be broken down to one of those three primitive shapes or combinations of those shapes. So if you understand how lighting hits uh, those shapes, you can uh, start to extrapolate that to, you know, whether it's a tree or the, the ground here, or that tower in the distance, you know, uh, in this view, we're mostly looking at cylinders. So I'm trying to uh paint the um you know the lighting's coming from the left of the scene so i'm trying to reflect that in how i'm choosing where to transition from highlights to midtones and shadows uh you know in this piece in particular uh i was uh i think in the in the write up i called it negotiating with greens quite a bit uh greens are very tricky color to paint uh, which is fun plein air painting because uh, there's a lot of green uh, in the world. Uh, it's very easy to tilt it um, either too garish or too flat. Uh, and so it just it takes some balancing and uh, plants are uh, very complex in the way they interact with light. You know, light can be hitting a, a vegetation directly or it can actually be... Um, completely going through vegetation that's when you see plants have that very like saturated glowing almost look uh or of course it can be in shadow uh and so for the grass here finally i had to repaint it a couple times but um i realized i was missing a uh a mid-tone to just just sort of capture like the richness of the uh of the chroma there um yeah, uh, so here we just saw me, uh, I spent some time adding some detail in the back. Uh, you know, one thing, I talk a lot about sort of how you prepare for and think about plein air painting uh, in the workshop write-up itself, uh, but usually I don't finish the entire piece on site. Uh, I, I'm, I'm really out there to have fun and learn, so, uh, you know, I think I was on site here for about an hour, uh, and that felt about right, you know, I felt like, hey, it's time to take a break. Uh, and so really, I think that's okay. Like, you don't want to just push yourself through to the point where you're miserable, um, standing there trying to make a scene perfect. So I think usually I know when the right time to leave is like, I've, I feel like I've captured the essence of a place and then I can, uh, go home or go to a coffee shop and, uh, finish the, the rendering and, and the piece serves as sort of a, a good guide for uh for what i need to uh flesh out um yeah so here uh adding some people you know i i saw a lot of people walk by back there uh this guy was sitting on the bench here uh in the foreground for a while so it's sort of informed by my observations although i'm not like literally uh observing the guy as i'm drawing it but um i i think I usually try to add some life, some people or, or creatures, sort of uh, area-appropriate fauna uh, to a scene just to give it a little more, uh, you know, make it feel a little more alive. 
Uh, really last step here, I do a few final touches. Uh, color grade, I do final color adjustments, color grading in Photoshop. Uh, and just try to, you know, I paint with a lot of lasso shapes and, uh, um, you know, it can, and, and, and flat shades. So it can start to feel fairly precise. So at the end of a piece, I, I try to, you know, not only do I go in with some um, soft lighting overlays to uh, indicate like uh, diffuse light and bounce light in the scene and liven things up, but I also try to just like smudge and brush some areas uh, out to create a bit more uh, naturalistic of a look. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful and and uh, and the write up in the magazine as well, uh, obviously. So. I'd say number one kind of takeaway for me is I, I find plein air painting uh, incredibly uh, helpful for me to learn and practice as an artist. Uh, so I uh, encourage you to get out there and paint.